me as I pray for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, let your truth be known today and forever. Oh God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy Pentecost! This historic story that we heard earlier and that we celebrate today comes right at the beginning of the book of Acts. Now, Acts is commonly called the Acts of the Disciples. But truly, we know this book should be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The author of this <laughs> book of Acts is Luke. And he has given us a beautiful history of the beginning of the church as a follow-up to his gospel. So the end of Luke's gospel sets the stage. Luke writes, Jesus said, you can see now how it's written that the Messiah suffers, rises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations, starting from here, from <coughs> Jerusalem. You're the first to hear and see it. You're the witnesses. What comes next is very important. I'm sending what my father promised you. So stay here in the city until he arrives, until you're equipped with power from on high. Jesus then led them out of the city over to Bethany. And raising his hands, he blessed them. <coughs> and while blessing them, he took his leave, being carried up to heaven. And they were on their knees, praising and worshiping him. They returned to Jerusalem, bursting with joy. They spent all their time in the temple, praising God. Yes. Thus ends the Gospel of Luke. And we turn the page and get to start reading the rest of the story. Lucky for us. We're told Jesus had appeared to his followers throughout the 40 days after his resurrection. And Pentecost, as we heard from Chuck, was a Jewish holiday celebrated 50 days after Passover. So that means the disciples spent 10 days in the temple praising God after Jesus' ascension to heaven and waiting for this mysterious power from on high to come and equip them. Ten days would have felt like an eternity for me. I can barely keep patient for two-day Amazon delivery. <laughs> but with Amazon, I know what's in the box, and I know when it's supposed to arrive. For the disciples, they had no idea what was coming their way. They couldn't have even imagined what this day would bring. How could they have known? The sound of a rushing wind, tongues of fire, speaking languages they didn't learn. The supernatural power of the Holy Spirit is just beyond imagination. But this unbelievable day was just the beginning Pentecost was the launch pad for a religious movement the likes of which the world has never seen. None of the disciples could have imagined how their faith and convictions would speak to so many. How their beliefs in a risen Christ would spread like wildfire. How their number one persecutor would be struck blind and transformed into their number one advocate. How the Spirit would continue to carry the message through them across the waters. How many lives would be changed, and how so many would be willing to give up their lives. How long it would last, and how far it would go. How many 
new languages their stories would be translated into, or how the miracles would continue for centuries. As they stood together, that fateful first Pentecost, speaking in languages from around the empire with flames over their heads, they could never have known that the good news they proclaimed would transform followers of Christ into a living body of Christ, working together to serve the world like Christ did. As the word they would, as the word that would unify believers in every place flowed from their mouths in foreign speech. They could never have imagined this. A church over 2,000 years in the future gathering to celebrate their story. It was impossible for them to know what the Spirit had started in them that day. Those first century women and men had no capacity to know what was coming. But they did hope for it. This is what they had hoped for. We are what they had hoped for. Just as Paul, the number one persecutor turned number one advocate, wrote to his letter to the church in Rome, he said, if we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? Just like the first disciples, we too can't even imagine what the Spirit has started in us. Our hope and prayer for this whole year has been for God to guide us. That the Holy Spirit would use us and make us the church God needs us to be. We have no idea what that's going to look like. As a planner and an organizer, this can make me antsy. I want to know. I want to be ready. But if we're hoping for things that we already know and see, we're going to be severely stunting the spirit. As much as I want to know what's coming next, I'm learning to trust that whatever the Spirit has planned for us, it's going to be good. I mean, think about it. One year ago, last May, could you have imagined what we'd be doing here today? Or how about two years ago, before I got here? We couldn't have imagined what our ministry together would be like, how good it would be. We've been praying like we've never prayed before and asking Christ's Holy Spirit to lead us into the future. So we've got to know that a year from now, we're going to be a transformed church. We can't even imagine how it's going to be. <coughs> But we can continue to pray and ask the Spirit to lead us in being a true church of Jesus Christ. And we know it will be good. And no matter what it looks like, may we always be filled with the Holy Spirit. As poet Anne Weems describes in her poem, the Church of Jesus Christ, which I'd like to share with you today. The Church of Jesus Christ is where a child brings a balloon, where old women come to dance. It's where young men see vision and old men dream dreams. The Church of Jesus Christ is where lepers come to be touched, is where the blind see and the deaf hear is where the lame run free and the dying live. 
The Church of Jesus Christ is where daisies bloom out of barren land, is where children lead and wise men follow, is where mountains are moved and walls come tumbling down. The Church of Jesus Christ is where loaves of bread are stacked in the sanctuary to feed the hungry, is where coats are taken off and put on the backs of the naked, is where shackles are discarded and kings and shepherds sit down to life together. The Church of Jesus Christ is where barefoot children run giggling in procession, is where the minister is ministered unto, is where the anthem is the laughter of the congregation and the offering plates are full of people. The Church of Jesus Christ is where people go and they skin their knee or their hearts. It's where frogs become princes and Cinderella dances past midnight. It's where judges don't judge and each child of God is beautiful and precious. The Church of Jesus Christ is where the sea divides for the exiles, is where the ark floats and the lamb and the lion lie down together is where people can disagree and hold hands at the same time. The Church of Jesus Christ is where night is day, is where trumpets and drums and tambourines declare God's goodness, is where lost lambs are found. The Church of Jesus Christ is where people write thank you notes to God, is where work is a holiday, is where seeds are scattered and miracles grow. The Church of Jesus Christ is where home is, is where heaven is, is where a picnic is communion and people break bread together on their knees. The Church of Jesus Christ is where we live responsibly to God's coming. And even on Monday morning, the world will hear an abundance of alleluias. May God help us be this church. Let us pray. God of Pentecost, we have received from you an inheritance of fire, not ashes. You have breathed your spirit into us, and we have been born anew. And now our raised hands look for your purpose. Our feet look for your path. We look to spend our inheritance as fools for your grace. 